This is Think Tech Hawaii. Community matters here. With another episode of the Hawaii Food and Farmers series. So welcome back. It's my week. I'm really excited. I have uh, two Go Farmers with me and they are Miles and JC. Welcome guys. Thanks. So I haven't had a Go Farmer on in a little bit and I'm excited because I've been food system like I was telling you earlier it's just so multi-layered I could get anyone anyone that's doing anything is connected with the food system so um your go farmer can you tell me a little bit about uh where you go farm and what you grow and what's happening yeah so we go farm in <laughs> Waimanalo at the Windward um UH Ag Research Station mm -hmm. and we have a nice plot kind of in the middle of the property and we grow a kind of a wide variety of vegetables aimed toward the CSA model where mm -hmm. you have a you need to grow a variety to deliver something a little different every week. Oh, okay. And then you folks work in tandem. So JC, do you also farm? I know you are have been involved in a lot of different farming, a lot of the farm community. Can you tell us a little bit of yeah, so um, I've been pursuing herbalism pretty ah, strong okay. recently, and so uh, I just got back on island and jumped right into the farming as well. <laughs> um, we both put practices to use that we've acquired over years mm -hmm. farming, so we're in it together. Mm -hmm. How long have you both been in agriculture? Hmm. You can go first, mm. I think. Um, I started farming like right out of college, uh, studied environmental science mm -hmm. and wanted to get into um, one of the issues that I found pretty daunting, which are our current methods in agriculture. So I just started volunteering at a bunch of farms mm -hmm. and wanted to learn kind of the whole spectrum and I then got into nutrition also. So mm -hmm. um, it kind of just all merged together after that and mm -hmm. wanted to grow good healthy food and grow it in a way that's good for the planet too. Mm -hmm. So uh, ever since out of college, quite a few years now. And was that like uh, in Hawaii or you did that and then came to Hawaii? I did that. I graduated from college in Missouri and okay. then I moved out to Hawaii about five years ago and been okay. farming here also like ever since then. Uh huh. And then how about you Miles? I'd say probably three years oh. yeah so not really that long mm -hmm. and it started like three years after I graduated from UH what did you graduate with why did where were you going to UH um, I was going for a degree in natural resource management oh yes, yes 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 so I finished in like 2011 and then I was working for a private um, conservation contracting company mm -hmm doing field work for a, a while. And then you folks college. came together, Kahumana? Yeah. Kahumana uh -huh. in Waianae. Uh -huh. How is that? We're, I mean, they're, um, they really have been pioneers in a lot of, a lot of things. I mean, lots of uh, kind of like cool, innovative, different, different ideas from uh, the West Side. So how was it working there? Learned plenty, liked it. Um, yeah. They became my family away from home, pretty much. I learned a lot there, um, grew a lot there. Um, and I actually was, I think, market manager was my title there at the time he oh. came along. And so I was helping build a small retail shop oh. at the entrance of their cafe. And um, then Miles came and was full time on the farm. And as a nonprofit, they just kind of have you as a year by year contract. And ours were both up at about the same time. And mm -hmm. we had grown a lot there and huh. taken a lot from there and still are as involved with them as much as possible. Mm -hmm. um, refer people to them all the time, love what they do. Right, they're like your family. Yeah. <laughs> yeah like. And, um, but, 
you know, at some point you kind of have to ask yourself if you want to start your own. Mm -hmm. So from when we left there till now, it's been kind of a, a curve towards getting to that point. Mm -hmm. And joining Go Farm was a big step in that direction. How did you guys find Go Farm? Uh, let's see. I, I kind of knew about it since its inception. I think oh. I first heard about it when I was... Um, woofing at Mulholla Farms. That's another one. In mm -hmm. 2014, so I spent like three months there and I actually applied for the Leeward Go Farm. Oh. And I got in, but then I didn't know how I was going to... Make it happen. That's right, you had like a bunch of other things Actually, no, on. I applied for the Windward Go Farm oh. while I was living with no car in a tent on a farm on the North Shore. <laughs> So I got to scratch that. Yeah. Point. <laughs> so that wasn't gonna work out that time, huh? That that wasn't. Yeah. That wasn't the one you were that you were meant to be in. That wasn't the one that you were meant to be in. You've been farming for more than three years, then. Well, not really. No. Oh. I was only three months there, maybe a year and a half of Kahumana, and then a year three go farm. So and uh, thoughts on go farm? I mean, this isn't like me. I. It's not. <laughs> it's not like. No. So anyway, of course. let's promo go farm. I mean, I feel like all the people know if they've watched. There's it no anything. biased opinions here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's, this is all voluntary, uh, but what have been some of the uh, standout things? You th I mean, because you've obviously, you both have worked on different farms with different people in the agricultural industry. I mean, I'm always interested to see, like, what was it about Go Farm mm -hmm. that, like, helped you get to wherever it is that you were trying to go? Yeah, I, I can speak on this one. Yeah. So basically, like, working at, like, Mahala Farms and Kahumana Farms was, like, crucial in gaining, like, prior knowledge and prior experience and, like, different, seeing how, you know, things are done in different ways. And then coming to Go Farm, it's like, okay, it's a structure now where you learn, um, you know, different theories and soil mm. science and in classroom and then go out in the field and apply principles and kind of learn learn things in a structured environment and learn things you know how to do things efficiently um and operate on a small scale um which can't really find anywhere else in the mm -hmm. country mm -hmm. really it's it's an affordable class and you stick through it through the end and you get access to land Mm -hmm. in one of the hardest places on earth to get access to your own land. This is true. Yeah, and it's so. experiential learning, mm -hmm. you know? It's yeah. not just a classroom, but you get to put to practice everything you've learned on the land, mm -hmm. you know, and it's attainable through Go Farm. Mm -hmm. And I feel like it, it provides, it. this is what I've noticed as me being on the farm more, uh, in in what it is that that we're teaching, one, I mean, if you want to geek out on the science, we have a lot of science geeks out there, man. They're just like this, the farm wizards oh, yeah. of the kingdom. Um, <laughs> so that has been, that's been actually a really great takeaway. I mean, just knowing like, wow, there's, um, if you want to geek out, there is that. But then also that hard work is like coupled. And I feel like it's hard physical work, but I could see why people would love it. Like just sort of being out there. Um, okay, so I also brought you out here because Miles went through all the phases. He has his plot. How big is your plot? Like a, a little bit over a quarter acre, but basically just enough to call a quarter acre. And what do you folks grow? We grow a large variety of vegetables. Um, pretty much everything that you're all used to already. Mm. Um, so just greens? Greens, so greens including kale, collard greens, Bush chard and salad mix, salad bok mix, choy. head oh, lettuce, okay, okay, bok choy. Got all the roots in roots. there. Roots, carrots, beets, radishes. Oh, how are your carrots doing? They're they've germinated and they're it's the first step. Doing well, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes, okay. I'm always yeah. I always want to know like how's the carrot production? Yeah, um, yeah. I have a good feeling about they're, it. They're a little it's finicky, but pretty promising. We just don't give up. So. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You can. I feel like um, farming is, I've really integrated this in a lot more of like my um, workshops and my classes is like if you're going to go into any type of farming, 
Uh, resilience is going to be really key. Yeah, because if you're just like going to give up first try, like. Mm. Yeah, you've got. Maybe you weren't meant for this <laughs> life. Yeah. If you're gonna do it, you've got to be all cards in and get gear up and gather all the resources you have and say you're 100 percent in or don't even try at all. Don't, don't even don't waste. Don't bother. Don't, <laughs> don't waste. Your time. Where's the one I should look into? <laughs> don't go into it if yeah. you can't go all the way. I mean, you need the passion that's yeah, gonna you help totally you geek need. out when mm -hmm. you want to geek out, but you also need the physical you really do. strength behind mm -hmm. it and, and motivation. So. And then what about on the remedy side? Is it in your learning? Is it um, how to use all things, like or the healing properties of all things, or how is that going to integrate with what you guys do or move forward with your farm? Pretty mm -hmm. much. So we feel like the, the name kind of is all-encompassing in that right now the stage is that we're growing vegetables and we both see food as your medicine. <laughs> um, and so it is kind of a more holistic view on you know all things natural and a cleaner uh, diet, a more plant-based diet is is really beneficial and we want accessibility to that kind of quality mm -hmm. food and so food is the remedy yes but the um, vision is to potentially be growing more medicinal herbs too so you know hoping. holistic plant medicine in addition to a holistic diet mm -hmm. I think it's a good move so, yeah I think it's a good I mean just as far as you know like what I do for us has a lot to do with the marketplace mm -hmm. so when you're just looking at where things are going and, and where there's leverage or room. Yeah. I mean, there's so much opportunity, but I feel like uh, health mm -hmm. is very is very high up there. Yeah. Um, can you put the picture of? Uh, we're gonna we're gonna give you guys a little. I really love this one. <laughs> I really love this one. Um, so this is in Waimanalo for everyone who's looking and doesn't know where that is. It's like the iconic Waimanalo mountain view. Mountain view. Um, and this is your guys' plot, I'm assuming. No, you just went <laughs> yeah. next door and took a picture. <laughs> it's so. better than ours. <laughs> Let's go over there to their plot. Uh, can you tell me a little bit about the conditions in Waimanalo, just because I feel like Ooh. sometimes people don't, uh, if you don't grow food and you are not a farmer, I feel like that doesn't always correlate. Um, mm -hmm. Or there's also some people who never leave Waimanalo and or go into Waimanalo. So what's it like in Waimanalo? Well, personally, I love living there. Um, mm -hmm. It's got everything I need in life, and I don't ever need to leave. <laughs> but <laughs> I'm, That's I'm, great. I'm, I'm one of the types who was never curious about what was ever on the other side of the hill. But mm -hmm. that, I mean, that's besides the point. But mm -hmm. um, if you can successfully farm in Waimanalo, you can pretty much have success anywhere because. I think it's one of the most challenging places in the world to grow vegetables just because um, Hawaii's isolation is, is kind of a blessing and a curse. We've constantly got a new pest coming in. Um, I heard that's where all the pests go to retire. That's what, that's what Jay said. That's what he yeah, I mean, there's, there's, it's been an agricultural research station for years and years, and there's been it's just kind of a pest magnet. Mm -hmm. And yeah, like I said, con things, new things are constantly coming in and nothing ever leaves. Mm -hmm. And it is an seasonal there, yeah? It is kind of, sort of like really, really hot mm -hmm. in the summer, shouldn't grow greens, should grow okra. I kind of beg to differ. Oh, um, oh. <laughs> it's more rain. If, and, okay. I you think, know, I think too much is the I is the exception to where it's it's hot and you should you know maybe use caution in what you grow. Mm -hmm. um, I think with good irrigation you can do anything you want year round mm -hmm. in Waimanalo. It's just a tad cooler than anywhere else. It usually has nice cooling breezes, uh, not currently, um, but <laughs> you know when it rains it gets really hot and muggy and the clouds just kind of sock in against the mountain and it never things never really dry out. And but, you know what loves and humidity and moisture is disease. Oh, so yeah. So that. the challenge, the challenge. Let's. I'll just kind of go down the list. Mm -hmm. The challenges are a never-ending pest cycle, mm -hmm. because unlike the mainland, the winter doesn't freeze everything over and oh, kill okay. insects for a season. So the insects are never-ending. 
and the diseases and bacterial rots oh. are intense during moist weather, um, especially during the wetter winter season when it'll rain and things will n never really dry out because it'll rain and it'll be cloudy and it'll just keep raining. Okay, just only one more. Only okay, one more I'm sorry. No, I'm, pa I'm painting a really <laughs> grim <laughs> no, picture. Like, hold on, hold on. We we painting a really yeah, grim, <laughs> really... Then we're going to go to break and then we're going to come back and we're going to talk about all the good things. Yeah. So last, last challenge of the... So we have pests, disease. diseases, <laughs> and... Not funny, not funny. Yes. And let's see, soil. Oh, soil. Um, our soil type is also kind of a blessing and a curse. Mm -hmm. um, it's a uh, mollusol clay. <laughs> Don't. I'm pretty confident yep, nope, in that yep. answer. No, no, no. We're just, I'm a GoFarm graduate, just so I've got the credentials. Yeah, yeah. But um, it's very comp compact clay soil. So when it it rains, you have to like wait at least oh, yes, three right, days before you can do anything with the soil. But very rich. But very rich. Yeah. Volcanic, so it, beautiful, rich. Soil. Things are looking up. <laughs> it is naturally. It is. <laughs> it is naturally, as opposed to the central Oahu um, iron oxide orange soils, we're very naturally mineral rich. Okay. So we've got abundance of naturally occurring minerals, but it's hard soil to work with. Challenging soil to work with. Well, I feel like that was enough for everyone <laughs> to chew on before they're gonna head out there, or just that. I think the point is, it's not. It's just not an easy ride. It's there. You there. You're gonna have some, some soil. Gotta have some some knowledge. Back Gotta have you. some knowledge. Okay, we're gonna take a quick break, and then we're gonna come back, and we're gonna talk about all the cool, exciting, <laughs> happy things about about farming. Yeah, take it away, guys. This is Think Tech Hawaii, raising public awareness. Hi, I'm Sharp, host of the Asian Review here on Think Tech Hawaii. Join me every Monday afternoon from 5 to 5.30 Hawaii Standard Time for an insightful discussion of contemporary Asian affairs. There's so much to discuss, and the guests that we have are very, very well informed. Just think, we have the upcoming negotiation between uh, President Trump and Kim Jong-un. The possibility of Xi Jinping, the leader of China, remaining in power forever. We'll see you then. If you're not in control of how you see yourself, then who is? Live above the influence. They said I could play, so I ain't chance to play at all. That's my life. I love music. And we're back. And we are here with Roots and Remedies mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. from Waimanalo. And this is Miles and JC. And they're talking to us about being new farmers, uh, growing new things. And uh, one, of the, one of the main things that is coming up is uh, you folks have a winter CSA? Um, mm -hmm. that's about to launch in October-ish, in October. Mm -hmm. They're just coming up really quick. Yeah. Uh, and I kind of just wanted to do a little bit of a what is a CSA and why is that important? Um, do you think you could tell us? Because I feel like we get that a lot. Like, I always tell people, like, the quick version is it's like a food box or a food bag, mm -hmm. but I feel like the drawn out version is so much more than that. Like I, I feel yeah. like it's its origin. Yes, yes, yes. So yeah, so um, well, it stands for community supported agriculture. And um, the idea, I think, was initiated in, in more seasonal growing areas. Mm -hmm. um, that makes so sense, because that's why it's mm -hmm. like the weeks that they got it. Okay. Right, and, Started in Vermont. and asking your community members to support you in a way where they give you money up front. Mm -hmm. is beneficial for the farmer to do a lot of things that cost a lot in the beginning of the season, you know, seed and equipment and all these things to set up and then... Um, Compost, fertilizer. Well, I mean, the list goes on, but um, <laughs> here it's still, I mean, it's still showing your support by being willing to pay up front 
to your farmer and commit, really. It's about mm-hmm. commitment and um, that support, that commitment, and, um, you know, wanting to have that farmer be your farmer mm-hmm. is, uh, it creates a relationship. And so um, what we do then on our end is we have that support from that community member. Usually it's for residents, you know, and you get an entire box or bag of veggies. We offer seven to ten items in our box, mm-hmm. and then you receive that box weekly. And um, it's a variety, you know, we make sure that there's a good balance to it. You know, you always want to get some greens and some roots, maybe some culinary herbs, mm-hmm. and maybe some new things you've never worked with before. Mm-hmm. Um, it can encourage you to kind of broaden your spectrum of, of using vegetables and, um, you know, you know that you're getting it from a good quality source, whereas right. the gamble in a grocery store can be that it's imported or right, not Or like you, you know who the source is. Yeah. Like you will actually you know inter- Yeah, you will actually interact with that yeah. person. And if you wanted to get into it, you could go to where it is being grown. Exactly, so. and we love visitors. We've already had some cakey to our plot, and the kids are really, it's fun to spark that interest in them and mm-hmm. have them see that carrots aren't, aren't just, you know, from a bag in the grocery uh, store. That everything comes from a place. In little nubs, mm-hmm. they like, you know, uh-huh. have tops, yeah. and they're pointy, <laughs> and they come out of the ground. <laughs> so. How long uh, are do subscriptions usually last, and then do they, do they come around seasonally as well, or what has your been? Mm. What is the take from your farm? So the plan is to do eight months out of the year. Huh? So a CSA for four months, short break, and then another CSA for four months. Mm-hmm. So it's basically a CSA for eight months out of the year, mm-hmm. because we need some time to rest and recuperate, and mm-hmm. during that time, it also takes time to. The soil thing. as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah like it's all just, things, all holistically connected. We'll probably be growing every month out of this year just because it's our first year mm-hmm. and we're yeah. going to try and work as hard as we can mm-hmm. to put some money in the bank yeah. and get things going. So we'll probably hope the hope is to maybe get some restaurant scouts going mm-hmm. every week and we'll be at, we're just applied to be at the um, Saturday morning Kaka'ako Farmer's Market. Is that Pam? That mm-hmm. is the farm mm-hmm. owners market. Mm-hmm. Oh, so that's great. We're gonna try to establish a presence there and get the word out. I think that's good. And that'll yeah. en- encourage us to continually sow crop successions and not get lazy. And, and we want to be available more than just for those who, you know, for those who can't commit to that long of a period of time right, or right. a whole box. You know, we want to be able to interact with the greater community also, and that provides that opportunity. And some exposure and um, but this CSA the winter CSA will be 16 weeks so okay. we're gonna start mid-October and we'll go through January uh, can you put up the other photo there it is yay, yay. yay. there it is um, all the info all the info right there and then um, if they wanted to contact you. I mean, the information is on the flyer, but uh, you also, you folks are also on the social network as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and we're going to put that up. Oh, there it is. Is that correct? That's correct. Oh, there it is. So that's their Instagram uh, that was just, that just flashed. Mm-hmm. Um, root underscore remedy. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I feel like I have seen that you folks have been posting and kind of like, and kind of, and yay, not me, not, yay. not I. I have seen, I have seen a shift. <laughs> JC does the Instagram. Yeah. Uh, we like to share the knowledge and the beauty. So mm-hmm. yeah, and the, be, and the values of your farm. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So you can contact us through that. We also have email. Or just call us. Phone number. Pick numbers. up the phone and old fashioned style. Mm-hmm. Oh. Miles likes that old fashioned. I style. will. Yes. You'll hear my voice, and I'll hear your voice, and we'll communicate. She's like, well, or you could send us an email, or or DM us on Instagram. Yes, yes. So all, always, uh, always, and methods, um, and that's going to be launching pretty soon. So I think that it's so cool that you'll also be doing, gonna test out the farmers market. Uh, Kailua, mm-hmm. you said, no, Kakako. Kakako. Saturdays. Kakako Saturdays. Um, to kind of test that market too. So if people are looking for, I feel like people are, 
Yeah. And they, everyone in Jin society is sort of like at some point yearning for some type of connection with reality. Um, and I feel like if you're in town a lot, or if you're in the country a lot, like kind of having that place or space to merge yeah. um, is helpful. Um, so that is, that is the main product, is that correct? That is like the main product is the 16 week CSA. So it's $30. But then everybody pays up front, yeah? They pay for the 16 weeks? Yeah, so, yeah. 16 yeah. weeks of $30 a week adds up to 480 mm -hmm. And it is asked to be paid up front, but, you know, we're also willing to work with you. Just give us a call, and we'll try to figure yeah, out see a, what's the a vibe. plan that works mm -hmm. for both. See what's the vibe. Mm -hmm. And then uh, when you're thinking about the future for... I mean, I know like you're fresh in it. Like we're doing, yeah, we're doing subscriptions, yeah. we're doing markets, we're germinating. Yeah. Um, what what do you hope for the future of agriculture, or the future of your farm, or in Hawaii, like you know, hmm. next three years? I'll try to give a timeline on that. Like before, wow. I used to just let people go. <laughs> I used to just let people go, and then I used to get like way way far. I'm like, oh, how about just three years now? Yeah. <laughs> Okay, yeah, I think um, I think programs like Go Farm are going to have a significant impact on the future of farming in Hawaii. Just he just believes this on his own, you guys. <laughs> this is not, this is not. I'm, <laughs> no, I, I'm seeing it firsthand. Uh, I'm seeing, you know, you, you educate someone and then you give them the opportunity to grow and then, you, the you know, mm -hmm. it's great you know let, let the magic happen but I think it, it has to happen mm -hmm. there's no there's no other choice mm -hmm. if it doesn't happen you know the it's gonna be a bummer yeah it's kind of grim mm -hmm. the the, uh, the other side of the story you know we're making changes little by little so mm -hmm. we hope to be a testament to that and mm -hmm. um, see you know a little less imported and a little more production on island so that is very awesome. Thank you guys so much for coming over the mountain and coming into the downtown and coming up the elevator and being in this room with no windows. I, um, I'm so grateful for all the work that you folks are doing and I'm super excited to, um, to see like all the new, I'm excited for the, the remedies component. Yeah. I'm excited to also have another farmer like in the, on the, like on the street in the game, mm -hmm. in the game. Cause I feel like the, the more real ones that are there, that are sort of even just like neighborhood styly, mm -hmm. I think is hmm. a good key. Like there's room in yeah. there to We've got like, a lot of passion to share, so. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, everyone, that is the end of today's uh, Food and Farmer series. Miles and JC, Root and Remedy, Roots and Remedies, uh, CSA subscription. See you later. Mm-hmm.